Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Alice. Alice has come down on the plane this morning uh, from Sydney and she's going to be our model for today. I'm going to do her hair. Oh, for, uh, when did I meet you first? Maybe... 2018 on the 1st of April. <laughs> How do you know that? Right. Good <laughs> memory. the first modelling job I've ever done. Yeah, right. So I did a show with Matrix some time ago um, when I first began my uh, relationship with them and I met Alice and I thought, well... She likes having hair cut short. You guys have been asking for me to do short haircuts, so I brought a very special person down from Sydney, so we're gonna do that today. Thank you. I'm gonna head out the back. I'm gonna mix up um, some lightener, and I'll come back and I'll have a bit more chat about why and what I'm gonna do. A few things I do when I'm lightening hair is make sure that I have a great lightener, one that is appropriate for use on scalp because there actually are different ones. So I'm using uh, Matrix Lightmaster with Bonder and 30 volume. We're gonna put it on the roots first. So it's good that we've got a good amount of regrowth to start with. Um, and then as I said, about 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before the ends, I'll see how the roots are coming up and then we'll take it onto the ends. But we need to be very careful that we don't damage the hair. I know we're cutting it short, but if you Sort of push your hair a little bit too far, you can make it wiry and it's not very nice, so we don't want to do that. Also, I like to start in the back, so in the event that it lightens fast and I need to get the back off, I can. So I'm going to start by applying this on scalp to the back. Wish me luck. I've got it on the roots. It's actually quite, for me, I believe, I, I actually respect and admire colorists a lot who do this all day, every day. As you know, generally in the salon, I don't color hair, but it's actually a very, very technical steel. It's so important that you only put the lightener on the regrowth. However, if you don't get it right to the pre-lightened hair or the existing lightened hair, you're gonna get a line. So it's actually quite tricky. So that's on, I'm gonna go around uh, and check Alice's hairline, make sure I haven't missed any uh, hair. And then when you see us next, we'll be talking about putting it on the ends. So see you in a bit. Okay, so we are at the 45 minute mark. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some color on the ends and try and get some of this build up out of the ends. But as I've mentioned, um, I keep an eye on it because what we don't want to do is compromise the condition of Alice's hair. Uh, again, because I put the roots on at the back first, I'm going to start in the back. And I'm basically going to take it through like um, we were saying, putting colour on the ends, whether we're doing a, a semi or a demi-permanent colour. Again, the only important thing to remember is this, is saturation is key. So you don't want to go... I guess... Um, a lot of things we talk about when we're using colour in salon is you don't want to waste it, you don't want to over apply it. That's not the case with lightener. Saturation is key, so we need to make sure that we put, there you go, there's a timer going off. Uh, we want to make sure that we put um, an adequate amount of lightener on the ends. I'll spin Alice this way and you can see what I'm doing back here.
Okay, so it's on to the ends and the um, bonnet's back on. We call these plastic bonnets. Just uh, keep some heat in there, helps through the processing. It feels strong at the moment, but um, when I'm doing this, I set 10 minute intervals, sometimes five, and every five to 10 minutes I come back, check it. I like to check the product through the ends. I pull on it, feel the integrity of the hair. I know we're cutting all Alice's hair off and it's probably not gonna matter if I damage the ends a little bit, but that doesn't make it okay. Let's, let's go 10 from now. I'll come back if um, I haven't already rinsed it and uh, maybe give you a close up to see what's happening. Otherwise, the next time you'll see us, we'll be back here. Um, we'll have done the toner and we'll be ready to do the haircut. And at that point, I'll have a chat to you guys about what I did in the toner and chat more about the um, lightening process. See you soon. We can see what's going on here. First application's done. We did Matrix Light Master with Bonda, 30 volume and then 20 volume on the ends. Um, the roots have come up amazing. And all I want to do now, I know I'm, a lot of this is going to get cut off, but I really want to clean this out because I want to get it as light as I can. And at the moment it's like that sort of strawberry blonde. Uh, obviously it's raw, we haven't done anything. This is just a removal of the, um, the lightener. So I'm going to go back through, especially here where I know the hair is going to be. I'm not going to, like where we're still going to have hair where I'm not going to cut it off. Um, I'm actually going to reapply. I've got some um, Matrix Light Mask with Bonda with 6% again. So I'm just going to take sections, um, get up to where that regrowth was and just pull that through the ends. I really want to get it a little bit lighter. The hair's actually pretty strong, which is good. Like I'm pulling on it really hard. It hasn't broken at all. Um, and other than the ends that were already um, damaged when um, Alice arrived, um, it's in really good nick. So second application, I'm going to get this on. Uh, just on the ends and then hopefully um, when you see us back we're going to talk about the toner we did and also I want to have a chat to you about an amazing product that we use which I think has probably helped us um, to protect the blonde um, that Matrix has given me to use today so um, I'll get right into it. We're back from the basin and no the colour isn't finished obviously. Let's have a bit of a chat about that. In hindsight which is an amazing thing I probably should have cut it first and I'll tell you why. For a few reasons. First is we basically use product and colour that is going to go on the floor. It's cheaper for the client because you cut it first so you use less product. But I figured, alright, so now I've got, I've done it the best I can pushing it as far as I can. Before I go and do the toner and then do a shape and like, oh, I can still see some of that darker hair I didn't want. I thought I'd bring it back, I'd, I'll run you guys through the haircut and show you all that and then we'll go back to putting a toner in the hair and um, getting the final color result. The idea for me is to try and build as much weight in here as I can, because I want to maintain all this length. So we're going to go in really tight doing graduation. We're going to bring this through this way. So probably like that. Even though we're not parting it in the middle at the end, always I start with a symmetrical parting so that I can find the axis of symmetry in the back and I'll bring that all the way down in the middle. All right, today I'm going to use my favorite scissor, which for you guys who may be interested, it's an offset handle. You can find them on my website, offset handle, um, six inch blade. So you see how the handle's offset? It's really good to balance your wrist. Okay, graduation. So graduation is hair that's cut between one and 89 degrees. Graduation creates this shape here. You can see that. Now I've got that one section. I'm going to find my center line, split it into two, and I'm going to do one side at a time. So the first section I do, the hair underneath is going to be over directed to my primary design line, which is right here. And again, I'm going to over-direct that underneath hair, so the hair that's on the hairline. And then we should have our guideline. Let me cross-check.
Now this hair will serve a purpose while we're doing this. I know that everything under that's going to come off, um, but I'm going to leave it to the end. I'm not going to cut that off right now. So now we're going to continue through. Again, we're using a stationary guideline. So in other words, what we just cut doesn't continue to elevate with each section. We're effectively cutting solid form on top of that graduated guideline. And the reason why I know it's graduated is because I'm cutting above zero degrees. It might only be 15, 20 degree graduation. Nevertheless, it's still graduation. So the reason why I left that long hair underneath, you can see I comb that up. That helps me with the guideline. Or helps me to find my guideline. And from here, if you've done your first section well, unless you cut into your guideline, it makes it very easy to follow. again but there's a method to my madness so now what I want to do and I probably could have gone a little bit shorter but I always stay on the side of caution so now what we're going to do is we're going to find this length that I'm going to use as my guide and we're going to continue this around into the back and then the hair that's underneath we cut off so let me just take a diagonal back section it's the first time I've actually, you guys have seen me cut wet hair in a while too, because unlike when I do um, long hair, I always cut short hair wet. Okay, so you can see there what I'm gonna be um, following. So this is going to come around like that. So I probably could have gone shorter, but this is why I edge on the side of caution. What if I went too high? If you go too high, well, I can't put it back, then you, you're always improvising. So I'm only going to take maybe a quarter of a centimeter off this existing length, just so I know that it's accurate. Now be careful when you, you're doing this over the ear, minimal tension, because otherwise, when it dries, it's gonna shrink, and you'll end up with a hole there. Keep following it around in the back, following this diagonal back section. Let's head up just a little bit for me, gorgeous, thank you. And we're doing horizontal. Here's my guideline. You guys can see what's happening here. Yeah, and then we take this hair down and we keep doing this until we run out of hair. Always the white end of the comb. Don't stretch the hair, especially around the ear. So I literally just place it over 
and onto my fingers. You can always go back and make it a little bit shorter if you need to adjust it. But if you make too, if you put too much tension there and it jumps up and it's too short, well then this has to all be recut, the entire line. You can't go and just sort of Frankenstein it and try and make it work because it doesn't look good. Again, now we're in a complete horizontal section and we literally need to pull all this hair over and make sure none of it comes down past our design line. And as the further you get across, you'll find there'll be less and less hair that meets it. And when you run out of hair, you can go to the other side. Even pulling or bringing this hair over to make sure. See those few little hairs there. Beautiful. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make this side a little bit shorter. Maybe even like, actually I won't. You know why I won't? I'm not going to because when we part it on one side, the other, the opposite side is going to look shorter anyway. But I think, I don't know, for me, I often get asked, especially like Alice is 21, half my age. And um, these haircuts, and you've probably heard me say something similar before. Stylists need to be very, very careful when they're cutting hair this length on young people. And I'll tell you why, because if you're not careful, and not that there's anything wrong with the word mature, because it's, you know, there's an argument to say, well, I am, because I'm 42. Um, you can actually make, you can actually make young girls look very old and look, the flip side to that is, it's a timeless shape, especially anything in the bob genre, that actually can actually, ten, um, what's the right word? It can actually reinvigorate someone my age and make them feel younger. So as, having something that's intentionally asymmetrical, not like one side's accidentally longer than the other, because um, that wouldn't be good. Um, if you intentionally cut someone's hair asymmetrical, I think it can actually make it look a little bit cheeky and modern makes it look a bit spunky and, and I think sometimes instead of just doing a classic bob shape if we just made it asymmetrical um, it would actually have a little something about it that people would be less inclined to think maybe it was just safe and safe could be also interpreted as maybe being a bit boring and classic so same as what I did last time we're bringing all the hair over to this side and we're cutting on a horizontal plane. So about horizontal planes, if I'm cutting Alice's hair on a true horizontal plane, I can't have my fingers angled in towards the face because then that makes it shorter. So a true horizontal plane will give you this shape, which is why it's longer here and longer there. Yeah, that's why it's long, long towards the lip and long towards her nape because the hair's rounded. So if we bring all the hair out and cut it on this horizontal plane, it falls longer. And if you don't like the point in the back, you can always cut that out later. But if you just follow hair around all the time, you end up limiting yourself <clears throat> to the type of shapes you can create purely because um, you keep cutting those sides off or the corners off. One of the products that we used today was called Unbreak My Blonde, which is an amazing new product by Matrix, which allows us to manage the integrity of the hair while we're light, lightening it. <clears throat> because having light hair, having blonde hair, removing color like we do. So 
there's a misconception out there that I coloured Alice's hair today. I actually haven't put any colour in it at all. What we've been doing is removing not only her natural colour from the root, from her regrowth, but actually removing the colour that was previously put in there by the last hairdresser. Um, so it's actually, there's no colour in it yet. This is actually a part of decolorization or colour color removal. So what it's, what's really important to understand is that it doesn't necessarily mean no, you can't lighten your hair because, you know, it'll be dry, it'll be frizzy, it'll be awful. So these products that are invented by companies like Matrix actually allow us to push the, uh, push the boundaries a little bit more, just like um, the lightener we used. It has a bond um, treatment inside it or a bond uh, technology, which will actually prevent the hair from breaking as much as it maybe would have had we have not had that. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't need to understand the science of lightening hair. It just gives us a little bit of a buffer that we never used to have. And then now with Unbreak My Blonde, that's a part of the <clears throat> color removal. So when we remove, sorry, the, the lightener removal, when we remove the lightener out of the hair, we use these products to just give that little bit of strength um, back into the hair and ensure that it's gonna be strong um, after it's been lightened. Our axis of symmetry again. Symmetry, I should say, not symmetry where we're probably all going to end up. That's what happens when you're dyslexic. You say things the wrong way all the time. I know. I knew what I was thinking, Alice. We're not. We're not giving you a. My dead ends are going to the cemetery. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm not, can I use that? I'm going to copyright that. That's my one joke. Well, I tried to make Alice laugh in the beginning of the video. She didn't think my dad jokes were funny. My daughter laughs at my dad jokes. <laughs> Might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if you want to create a point in the back, well, I guess I just showed you how to do it, right? That's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to cut this section of the haircut. Center parting again, because we need that. And then from here, we're going to find where the head, you can see where the head starts to round off here, so about here. clip of this hair off in the nape. We still are using graduation, so I'll get you to put, pop your head up, babe. So, not flat, not a flat comb. The comb's coming out like this. I'm actually starting to feel this strawberry blonde color with this haircut. because we still need to do 
the toner for Alice. I'm going to wait until the hair's completely dry before I go and make this my final sort of product. Um, but seeing as the purpose of this was to see how much of the darkness or that art, that um, home color, that box color was left in there, um, we're gonna have to color it and dry it properly anyway. And the purpose of this was to cut that, that color we weren't sure about out. Um, but while the hair is well, it's just, I guess it's damp now. Um, I thought I would just quickly clipper this nape. So I'm using a Panasonic GP81 clipper. And at the moment it has a number one guard on it. The reason why I always have a number one guard on it, not that I Unless it's on the hairline like I just did then, I always do clipper over comb. But the reason why I have a number one guard on there is because if I slip, I don't have to talk uh, Alice into having a zero fade. It's not gonna be too short, so. And I've seen that happen too. I actually have seen that happen. So, you know, if I just, you know, slip or... You have Alice, not seen that happen. Well, I have seen it happen, yeah, I absolutely have. Or Alice maybe sneezes or moves or, you know, because, it's, it's unnatural for someone to sit perfectly still for, you know, a long period of time. They could just move or something. And if you don't have um, a guard on there and she moves and you slip off your comb, you are gonna have to do from that point and everything below it, very, very short to not see the hole that would have been created if that were to occur. So. Thanks for considering my safety. <laughs> Even though you'd, you'd, you'd rock a, a zero fade in your nape, 100%. Oh, that's so nice. So the reason why I also left the nape until I made sure that my primary design line was in there because the long hair that is sitting underneath my primary design line, well now it's not there, I cut it off obviously already, but before I cut it off, it was actually, it was actually like acting as also a guideline because I know <clears throat> where not to go above. You can see that that long hair and sometimes if you just go and roughly clip that off, you can get a little bit lost and very easily um, lose where you're meant to stop. It's enough playing around for now. Gonna quickly blast this dry. Let me spin around. It's almost done. I mean, you know, I'm, I want to make sure that it's it's perfect. But just so you can see, because again, I could have done quite soft graduation. I could have done this like that and made it really safe. But I wanted to be bold. Like Alice and I were talking actually at the base, and that I hope you guys are really excited about her, you know, jumping on the plane this morning to come down and hang out with me, even though um, I haven't seen her for a while. We remained in touch, and um, I wanted to do something. I, wa I wanted to actually show that. Not only is she beautiful, she's young, but she rocks this, right? So, um, and I'm not saying that everyone should go and cut their hair off. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But all I'm saying is not enough women out there consider wearing their hair short because I think they're scared that they won't look beautiful. I mean, how can you say she doesn't look beautiful? I mean, you know, it's gorgeous. But because of, um, she actually um, is a, what do you call it? A pastry chef? Yes. Or pastry cook, pastry, pastry chef. Um, she's young, she goes out, she socialises, but I want it to be a bit edgy. So you can see by building that ledge there, like that's super cool. That is not an undercut, that's blended. So for anyone who says that I, I cut an undercut, you can see that that's all blended. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing an undercut, those don't grow out. For me, they don't grow out that well. And one of the things I pride myself on is um, my haircuts growing out well. And they grow out well because I use mathematics. Everything has a starting point, everything has a finish point. And I just think that it can be sometimes very harsh and somewhat a lazy way to do it. For me to just go bram, 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 shave it, cut everything underneath, and then just let all that hang over the top. It's just not necessary. So I really like the, the boldness of this. Because we have lightened the hair a lot today, we're going to finish, obviously, this is the product I was talking about, the Unbreak My Blonde range. So we're gonna use some of the Unbreak My Blonde leave-in treatment just to blow dry it. Um, don't need a lot, 
So I'm just going to put that in through the ends. Try not to put too much on the scalp. And always to ensure an even distribution of the product, any product in the hair, especially wet products. Um, we give it a little gentle comb through and we'll start drying off. It's really chunky, it's very classic, and now we need to make it a little bit more modern. We're gonna do this a few ways. First and foremost, I'm gonna address the back of the haircut. Better. I wouldn't normally um, say that this haircut has to be dried like this, but when you're doing dry cutting on short hair, just like we do on long hair, it's really important that we don't have any uh, kinks or curls or any movement because if we change the shape and add texture when the hair's not all um, evenly smoothed. It doesn't have to be straightened, but it needs to be smoothed out. Next time Alice goes to do it, um, we run the risk of it not sitting the way that I intended to. Now, the first part we're going to do, so whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing this, I don't just rely solely on adding texture. We're gonna layer it to remove some of the bulk too first, yeah? So we're gonna go and do horizontal layering. That would be 180, this would be 90. So call it, you know, 135. We're just gonna knock that little edge off. What scissors did I pick up there, the right ones? So that we start to remove the bulk using layering and not relying on texturizing. It's um, gonna create a better shape and it's gonna grow out a lot better. Again, using stationary guideline, bring everything back to that point to it. None of this hair from the front reaches the back anymore, which I think we've got there already. It's a little bit there. Yep. You can see already that started to round it off a little bit. So it's not so square. Then we're going back into graduation. So that top, we're now gonna join into the bottom. You see that little corner there that I'm going to knock out? That's a weight line too. By adding that layering on the top, we give ourselves a guideline so that we know for the rest of the haircut to remove that, the weight in that area we're trying to get to, we don't have to guess. I always like to give myself markers, so I'm not guessing. Again, this entire haircut has been done solid, um, sorry, blunt cutting. We haven't put any texture in it yet. So when we do, it's gonna look very, very different. That's that. Now we need to address the weight under here. Horizontal. We're just going to knock that out. You can see that coming away. Be careful of your tension. And similarly to the top, now we can go vertical. 
and we can start to adjust that and make it sit in better. Horizontal, you can see that weight line there. And then we join those two points together down here. And there's a little bit there. That was behind the ear. I'm happy with that. So don't worry about the, we're just looking at this shape. So now that it's not like that, and what am I trying to do? It's not like this, it's now like that. We've just rounded that off, which is gonna be cool. Go back to this side and we're gonna follow this around, just working out this weight there. And just like on the other side, we'll have that little bit behind the ear. We can now take it off so it's not hanging out. Now we're going to address the sides. Once I finish this back part, because once I've adjusted the shape there, then I go for the texturizer all at once. Better. I wouldn't normally um, say that this haircut has to be dried like this, but when you're doing dry cutting on short hair, just like we do on long hair, it's really important that we don't have any uh, kinks or curls or any movement because if we change the shape and add texture when the hair's not all um, evenly smoothed, it doesn't have to be straightened, but it needs to be smoothed out. Next time Alice goes to do it, um, we run the risk of it not sitting the way that I intend it to. Now, the first part we're going to do, so whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing this, I don't just rely solely on adding texture. We're gonna layer it to remove some of the bulk too first, yeah? So we're gonna go and do horizontal layering. That would be 180, this would be 90. So call it, you know, 135. We're just gonna knock that little edge off. What scissors did I pick up there, the right ones? So that we start to remove the bulk using layering and not relying on texturizing. It's um, gonna create a better shape and it's gonna grow out a lot better. Again, using stationary guideline, bring everything back to that point so none of this hair from the front reaches the back anymore, which I think we've got there already. Just a little bit there. Yep. You can see already that started to round it off a little bit. So it's not so square. Then we're going back into graduation. So that top, we're now gonna join into the bottom. You see that little corner there that I'm gonna knock out? That's a weight line too. By adding that layering on the top, we give ourselves a guideline so that we know for the rest of the haircut to remove that, the weight in that area we're trying to get to, we don't have to guess. I always like to give myself markers, so I'm not guessing. 
Again, this entire haircut has been done solid, um, sorry, blunt cutting. We haven't put any texture in it yet. So when we do, it's gonna look very, very different. That's that, now we need to address the weight under here. Horizontal, we're just gonna knock that out. You can see that coming away. Be careful of your tension. And similarly to the top, now we can go vertical and we can start to adjust that and make it sit in better. Horizontal, you can see that weight line there. And then we join those two points together down here. And there's a little bit there. That was behind the ear. I'm happy with that, so don't worry about the, we're just looking at this shape. So now that it's not like that, and what I'm trying to do, it's not like this, it's now like that. We've just rounded that off, which is gonna be cool. Go back to this side and we're gonna follow this around, just working out this weight there. And just like on the other side, we'll have that little bit behind the ear. We can now take it off so it's not hanging out. Now we're going to address the sides. Once I finish this back part, because once I've adjusted the shape there, then I go through and texturize it all at once. Better. I wouldn't normally um, say that this haircut has to be dried like this, but when you're doing dry cutting on short hair, just like we do on long hair, it's really important that we don't have any uh, kinks or curls or any movement because if we change the shape and add texture when the hair's not all evenly smoothed. It doesn't have to be straightened, but it needs to be smoothed out. Next time Alice goes to do it, um, we run the risk of it not sitting the way that I intend it to. Now, the first part we're going to do, so whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing this, I don't just rely solely on adding texture. We're gonna layer it to remove some of the bulk too first, yeah? So we're gonna go and do horizontal layering, that would be 180, this would be 90. So call it, you know, 135. We're just gonna knock that little edge off. What scissors did I pick up there, the right ones? So that we start to remove the bulk using layering and not relying on texturizing. It's um, gonna create a better shape and it's gonna grow out a lot better. Again, using stationary guideline Bring everything back to that point to it. None of this hair from the front reaches the back anymore, which I think we've got there already. It's a little bit there. Yep. You can see already that started to round it off a little bit. So it's not so square. Then we're going back into graduation. So that top, we're now gonna join into the bottom. You see that little corner there that I'm gonna knock out? That's a weight line too. By adding 
that layering on the top, we give ourselves a guideline so that we know for the rest of the haircut to remove that, the weight in that area we're trying to get to, we don't have to guess. I always like to give myself markers so I'm not guessing. Again, this entire haircut has been done solid, um, sorry, blunt cutting. We haven't put any texture in it yet. So when we do, it's gonna look very, very different. That's that, now we need to address the weight under here. Horizontal, we're just gonna knock that out. You can see that coming away. Be careful of your tension. And similarly to the top, now we can go vertical and we can start to adjust that and make it sit in better. Horizontal, you can see that weight line there. And then we join those two points together down here. And there's a little bit there. That was behind the ear. I'm happy with that, so don't worry about the, we're just looking at this shape. So now that it's not like that, and what I'm trying to do, it's not like this, it's now like that. We've just rounded that off, which is gonna be cool. Go back to this side, and we're gonna follow this around, just working out this weight there. And just like on the other side, we'll have that little bit behind the ear. We can now take it off so it's not hanging out. Now we're going to address the sides. Once I finish this back part, because once I've adjusted the shape there, then I go through and texturize it all at once. So when I started removing the real squareness out of this, we started on the top. So that's given us a guideline for the front. So now I'm going to comb this towards me and I can see where that point is and we're going to use that as a guideline towards the front so we'll just take like a little section out of there as a guide bring that into the front we don't need to cut that but that's going to give us a guide for our length and you'll see that when I lift it up there it is there and we're over directing this to retain the length towards the front and we're working uniform so we're not over directing it into the middle so if I spin Alice around you can see me doing it from the side you can see that I'm doing it uniform. I'm not bringing it back in here. I'm staying out there. Back into the middle. So we're just doing from there to here. And then we join the top to the sides. Now we'll see that we've lost the squareness from the sides as well. And we've just got where it squares off here and squares off there, but we're gonna bring these in. And now we can do that. So I'm back to my top section. 
you can see here, we section this right down that way. And then we're using the top to join to our side. You can see that there, we're cutting those corners off. Over directing to retain the length towards the front. So we're over directing to back where the ear is. You should start to see that falling less wedged. Do the same on the other side. Head this way for me, gorgeous, thank you. Over directing it towards the ear. So for those of you who didn't hear me say it the first time, I'm using the side and the top to determine the length. Much better. So now instead of having this wedge and instead of having it around, we've got it flat through there. And that's gonna allow me now just to taper this in a little bit so that it's not too flat in the sides, but at the same time, I don't want it sticking out and I don't want it too round. So now you can see the, the guideline I've got there. You can see that there. I'm gonna bring that in, and then all I need to do is adjust that length over the top of her ears. I just want it to come up just a little bit because I think it's still a little bit too long there. And then we'll be doing some texturizing, which will be fun, and that's when we actually start to make it really funky and fun. Again, over directing it back to the ear. And we just want to leave enough hair. So if we were to sweep it like this, we can tuck it behind the ear. We're going to be able to wear this texture. It's going to be awesome. It's very hard. It's very hard to see how this could possibly not look classic when we're still adjusting the shape. For those of you who skip forward, we colored Alice's hair first trying to remove the warmth that was left in the ends from box color and we couldn't. So then instead of doing a second application and then cutting the entire haircut, I decided that it made more sense for me to cut some of that hair off first before putting more color in and then we adjust the shape. So when she came back, that was just a raw shape. That wasn't like how I intended on leaving. You see now it obviously sits flatter and looks far more flattering. Did you mean to pun just then? No, another pun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it, flattering. <laughs> Made it flatter. Is that the one, is that the pun yeah. you meant? They're just that weak at this point that you have to try and figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> there was no pun intended there, darling. That's looking really good. Really good. Just looking and adjusting the shape. Always using the same technique to adjust. Rather than just saying that's good enough. Now it's time to texturize. We always need to make sure that if there's any adjustment made to the shape, that we do it using our fundamentals because otherwise it just doesn't grow out that well and it looks a little bit crap actually. Yeah, super cool. I'm happy with the shape and the length. Now it's time to do some texture, I think.
definitely. Let me just check to make sure that we are balanced and symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is almost take a rectangle out. So that we're left with the same amount of hair on both sides because the idea with this haircut is that Alice will be able to use this length either way so she doesn't get stuck on wearing it on the one side and this almost is a little bit of an undercut while we've got that there we may as well cross check that's great and we're just going to slip a little clip in there if I can find one He always elude me. Colorists take all my clips in this salon. We'll leave that up. And we're gonna check the shape on the sides. And then while this clip is up, we're gonna texturize on the sides. Okay, so we've clipped the top away. First where I'm gonna start is in the side. So, we're gonna add some texture with my croc. Again, you can get these on my um, website. If you're a hairdresser wanting to create this texture, these scissors create an amazing, unique texture. They're really cool. And I actually just like to freehand with them. And really, you can be quite heavy handed with them just to really break up these shapes. and help us get it a little bit flatter, like there's a lot of hair there. So with inside the shape, we can really remove some of that bulk. Make it super fun. Again, on this side, we're going to pull it back over the ear. And these really strong lines that we created when we did our base shape, we can go back and break them up too. But I generally like to do it underneath. I don't want to do it on top because um, we don't want it kicking out too much and then having to blow dry it a lot to sit in. That's looking heaps good. Head forward for me, babe. Happy with that. Hmm. This side I think might be a little bit heavier. So even when we're texturizing the hair, we want to try and create some sort of visual balance here. Yeah? Like in terms of the density, we don't want the hair to be really dense on one side and not very dense on the other. Now we're gonna get into the top. So just horizontal sections through the top and going quite deep and taking 
all that weight out of there. Because we want this to be able to go both ways too. We want it to look light and fun. We want it to move around in our hands a little bit. It's still really heavy in there. through it. Now getting it off the ears. We're doing that with texture. I want it to be a really soft line. I don't want it to be anything dominant. about having a nice perfect block of clay that we can go and mold at the end rather than having it too structured around the sides and that comes back to what I was saying about making it look a little bit more modern and you can probably see that I'm leaving Probably can't actually. I'm leaving a little bit of a disconnection there. This will be able to go back. And then because you guys didn't see that video, I'll show you what I did on this side. So taking this, leaving that forward, bringing that, and taking that off without texturizer, and then just freehanding above and around the, the back of the ear so it's soft and then in the front just really using texture to soften here and then just a little bit around here So we do have that little bit of a disconnection there. Beautiful. Again, it's something a little bit different it's not going to be, you know, your sort of standard, real heavy, strong shape around the ears. We just want it to all be light and fun. Yeah, super cool. Then to finish this, I'm going to add a little bit texture through here and then we're just going to use our crocodile scissor very appropriately named for us Aussies say crocodile it's called a croc I scary. think this one's a croc here yeah, it's called a crocodile it's only scary if you cut my head open. well I would never do that yeah. to you but it's scary if you're using it blindly and not really focusing on what it is you want to do you can actually it can actually be quite brutal you can can really um, put some massive holes in people's hand and in sorry hand hair 
hand even if they reach up for it. And um, just when using this at home, well, when using this at home where you live and at a salon, because you shouldn't be using these unless you really know what you're doing, you want to make sure that you watch. So as you're actually taking the hair off, you're consciously understanding what's actually happening. So I can see the channels that I'm creating when I do that. Not just like, oh, she'll be right. She'll be right, mate. Well, it won't be right in four weeks time when it grows out. It'll look not so right. Sweet. It's gonna blast some of this hair off here. Once I'm happy with the front, then I'm gonna style it. Because you've got an airport to get to and a plane to catch. So you can split it closer to the center if you want and we can pull that back. I'm going to show you a few styling options before I put the product in. So you can have it like this. As long as we have like some separation and definition in the hair, colour is banging. It's like this sort of cool beigey blonde with a hint of rosewood. Doesn't really do it justice on the camera. It's always interesting how it looks on screen versus with your real eyes. So I like that. It's quite splicey. Let me show the gang. Show them back in here. And then this way. Come forward. And then this side as well. You can make it look really like super cool. That's like hot, look at that. <laughs> I love that. Like that way it's off your face a little bit. Okay, so we need to put some product in it. So, Matt Definer by Matrix. You don't need a lot. Like um, one of the things that I'm not particularly a huge fan of is loading up short ladies' hair with lots of product. So I just, like less is more. So first, just make sure you've got some on your hands. Alice, if you could put your head down for me, that'd be great. So we just want to rub it in underneath, in through the front. It's all about be able to enhance the texture the definition and get some control. But Alice made a comment, she touched the hair and she's like, I can't believe how um, smooth and, and silky it feels. So if you go and load up someone's hair with too much product, the risk you run is that it just feels a little bit like gritty and a bit chunky and that's not good. I think with, um, we, we saw Alice before, like moving your hair around, you wanna be able to put your hands in your hair and not worry about A, having to wash them after or that you can't, um, actually, there's so much product in there, you can't do it at all. So Alice has a tendency to go close to a center part. So let's see what that's gonna look like. And this is the thing, so by having shape on shape, so we made sure the underneath was symmetrical. So we started with this like wedged bob. It was never gonna stay that way. It just, I just didn't like it. And I've already stated the reason why I did that. And then it's about cutting it away and watching it, her face shape. And you can see that this is just coming in perfectly suited for her face shape. So if she wants to do it like this, we can have this come down here. If you wanted to tuck that, I guess you can. And then it's like sort of a smooth look and then we put some texture in it and it's a bit fun. In the back, you can see what I don't wanna do is have the back smooth. So I wanna make sure that with some of this matte definer, we're actually rubbing it in here so we can see that um, texture and the layering and the shape in there. So it's got a little bit more than just sort of one heavy shape. Always make sure you get a little bit, rub it in here. And then when we spin around this way, you can see that it's longer on that side. So let's see what it looks like if we do it the other way. So then we go back to having it more messy. We can have, so this side is obviously gonna be if you wanna have a sweat fringe and then this comes across, you can see that that sits there quite nice. So we have that beautiful cutting line. Sorry, coming down this way, I'm looking in the mirror. And then texture on top. And we can pull this right back to really show a face shape off. And if you want to have a little bit of softness out there, you can. So that's beautiful too. Yeah, that's my favorite. I think that's, for me, I like it like that. 
And then the other way is obviously all coming across this way, which I like for two reasons. One, if Alice wants an option, she can get it off her face. She can. But I sort of just like the way the hair falls a little bit more that way. You can see that this sort of can be worn across. We can pull it back. Again, if you pull it back, you're going to get that dip for the face shape. I think this is probably the smoothest, like prettiest way. I don't think it, it looks like dated or mature, but it's a very smooth sort of like maybe she's going out to dinner with her friends or something and, you know, it's, it's a smoother look. I think for street and every day when she washes and wears it and doesn't blow dry it because I had to do that again because I was texturizing it. And if I, like, if it was just wrapped dried, it would have just made it very, very hard and it would have made it very hard, um, would have made it um, hard for me to texturize and it would have been very inaccurate. So I guess what we want to try and achieve before I give her a headache by pushing her hair around so much, is to sort of find how the hair is happiest without it being manipulated too much. So I just want to say, oh, well, that looks like it sort of just fell there by itself, and we're just going to you know, turn this a little bit out. So we've got a little bit of a flick there. So that's cool. And then we're going to have some. I like that how it turns out, that's cool. Just, I don't know, it's something about that. Just flicking out a little bit, it's pretty cool. And then we want it to look like it's sort of just doing its own thing rather than it's being placed in there. It's pretty hard to make it look bad, to be honest. You know what I mean? See, so it's just got that nice cool texture in there. So we end up doing a really long pixie cut, which is cool. Very, very happy with it. Stay there and we'll be back in just two seconds. Was it worth the flight down? Very, very much, definitely. You look amazing. I love it so much. Thank you, Adam. It looks super cool. Let's spin around. We're just going to do a quick recap so you can see what we've done in the back. Working with a um, really, really strong shape. Um, and then we've gone back and broken it all up, given it lots of texture. I like how it's splicey. You just have little bits falling around. Just want to make sure that we don't go flat anywhere. We flipped it this way. Alice just got up and had a bit of a look in the mirror and she just instinctively put it that way and I think it looks cool too. I think the beautiful thing about these haircuts is they are really flexible in the way you style them. Um, so yeah, you can wear it both ways. As long as we don't get flat, which is cool like that. I sent her home business <laughs> class so she won't complain. I'll put her I'm in business. Fancy so, yeah. now. <laughs> business class. New haircut. I love it so much. I'm glad you're happy. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate your support. Um, if it's the first time you've seen one of our videos, please make sure you subscribe um, so you'll stay uh, up to date and notified whenever we drop a new one um, because Alice is going to come back in about six or seven weeks' time. I'm shooting a project in May, uh, a series of uh, seven, six, seven videos um, that I'll roll out um, over the course of winter, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to come? You haven't committed yet. She's got to check if she's doing yoga. I'll cancel everything for this. This is how good it is. She got the day off work and flew down from Sydney to have me do your hair, so it was worth it. Yep. Worth awesome. being in trouble. Uh, Sorry, it, boss watches. <laughs> well, the customers are going to be happy, that's for sure. Yeah. Especially when they see the, the new Alice come back to work. Uh, anything that I uh, used on today's video, you'll find at adamchacha.com or over on Facebook or Instagram, eStores. Um, get yourself a hair tube t-shirt. Um, every little bit helps me produce videos so that I can pay for Alice's flight down from Sydney and we can keep making more videos for you guys. So um, from Canberra, Australia, it's goodbye and we'll see you next time. Bye.